Good morning and welcome to the third office vlog. I'm re-recording this after I've actually shot everything because uh, some things have changed and the wall is going in. Excellent. So soon I'll be able to use the entirety of the space that I have here. Um, but that did mean that some of the things that I wanted to do today uh, I didn't do because there was construction noise and I'm just gonna wait until that's gone. But uh, very soon here, I will be able to get outside of the big room and move into this weird tiny room and then set up my modern computer in here and then start loading storage items into this room back here and be able to fully utilize my office. But today's objectives that we're going to go through are going to be primarily focused on trying to find a source of bookshelves because I am, of course, going to need more of those. And there are some items that are not going to be PC games that I need to put on them, so they can be different and not match the ones that I have. So I'm going to start out today by going to some Goodwills to try and find a bookshelf, at least for one set of things that I have that will be talked about in a future video. Um, and if I can't find any at Goodwill, then I'm going to go to Ikea because I was told about the Billy bookshelf there, which is... Uh, a large enough and appropriate bookshelf there that will look okay in here. Um, again, I try want to try and get only vintage furniture to put in here, so that's what my objective is, but uh, I'm going to do that. Then I have a couple of other tasks that I want to do today, including finally getting the hard copy supporter stuff set up, and I want to go over how that works because I haven't really talked about how I do that on the channel, and I figure that could be kind of fun to cover while I'm talking about all this office stuff. So with that, let's get to the first Goodwill. Okay, I don't have any stealth glasses here for filming inside, so if I do any filming, I'll be narrating this afterwards because I don't want to be talking to myself like a weirdo in there. And I'm probably just going to have to wave my phone around at individual things that are interesting. Okay, that one was a bust, but there's not usually a lot of furniture there anyway, so I still have three more shots to find a vintage bookshelf before I go to Ikea. All right, take two. Let's see if I can find any. All right, I'm 0 for 2. I've not seen any bookshelves, let alone just one that's acceptable. This is weird. All right, here's hoping. Good morning, good wood shoppers. Thank you for choosing our Well, I guess I'll take Today's these. Pink. I don't think... No bookshelves, but, you know, big box PC software. Although, Encarta's missing the disc, so that's going to kind of suck to have to get. But, uh, oh well, looks like it's a second edition. That's kind of cool. Last chance, Goodwill. All right, Ikea it is. This one actually had a bookshelf, but the bottom part was converted into a cabinet, and it was just cheap target garbage so I don't really want that. There was a really weird Thrustmaster Fragmaster joystick. It was kind of cool but overpriced and uh, yeah not really that good but oh well Ikea. All right time to enter the Swedish maze. All right that's the one there I'll be going with just in case anyone is curious here. It's a Billy shelf. It's funny, it has a cutout for a baseboard at the back, but their baseboard is too tall, so it doesn't actually fit, because uh, you're meant to be able to put it all the way up against the wall. Are you kidding me? I went through four Goodwills. <laughs> it's in Ikea, and it's not here. <sighs> all right, that sucks. I refuse to get it in white or black. That's just so boring. Oh, that's frustrating. Yep, they're really out. Although, really stupidly here, this is the six foot tall one. If you get the three foot tall one, it's $10 less for half as much shelf. So obviously those are all there because who would want to do that? All right, I'm squeezing in two more Goodwill since apparently it's mission impossible to find a bookshelf. I have one of these in the box still, but I'm still going to look at every single one of these in the store to make sure they don't come with a sound option, just in case, because it's still really cool. But I'm going to leave this here for somebody else who may need one, because they're definitely nice. This is a power strip with an ADB cable connected to it. Uh, 
that's interesting. Power key. I'm gonna have to look that up later. That's cool. There was a two by four Calyx for 12 bucks, already sold. I could have made that work. There was some weird, really thin bookshelf that was considering it of desperation, already sold. Dude, why are people still buying all the bookshelves? No one needs to be making fake zoom backgrounds anymore. Come on. All right, this is the last good one I'm trying, but there might be a couple of other independent and religious affiliated thrift stores I can hit before I give up. Okay, Extron always makes interesting stuff, but this is a 12 input VGA cross point switcher. Look at this, that's just, what? That's insane. I kind of want it, it's only $12. I don't need it. But I don't think I can leave it here. How much does it weigh? Not a lot. That's cool. I think I'm about to spend 25 bucks on this hunk of garbage. It's actually a bookshelf. It just has cabinet fasteners and doors put onto it. Um, and whatever this thing is, I don't know. Um, I want 25 bucks, but I can get a little bit off of that. Um, the doors will come off, the shelves are movable, they slide forward, well, the ones that actually move here. Um, has holes to position everything everywhere. It's wide enough, and there's, well, let's see, one, two, three, four shelves, they're 30 inches. It's 120, I would have to actually either make another shelf or use the bottom to get enough. <sighs> this is annoying. This is the only bookshelf I found I could possibly buy. Why? It's so rough. I think I just have to pass. And I don't know that I can move this shelf and this shelf takes up too much space between there and there. This one would have to go up two at minimum, but this is the one that has all of the weird angled fasteners that you would have to move. And I don't know if these are going into holes that need to be bigger or these old tiny ones. So I, I don't know. This is annoying. But you know what I do want? A wooden filing cabinet. Ooh, hello. That's not bad. Oh, maybe I will get that hunk of garbage because I'm going to be checking out a bunch of stuff. Fine, I bought the stupid bookshelf, and of course that awesome wooden filing cabinet, and um, yeah, an extra one. <sighs> so that's solved now, unfortunately, and fortunately. At least that bookshelf is kind of heavy duty, so I can repurpose it as a storage shelf later once I find something I actually like. <sighs> Finally, a bookshelf. This shouldn't be this hard, but that'll at least work. Now to go get a dolly so I can bring it up the stairs to my office. All right, now the day can begin, you know, like four hours late. Uh, this should have been easier. Okay, I'm in here on the next day for reasons I won't get into, but I couldn't get in on both Sunday and Monday, it turned out, so I'm a little behind here. But some work is proceeding. Uh, here, this light, oh man, it's hard to point behind you, is gone, which was one of the lights controlled over here, and now one of those switches is gone. The middle switch that was the one I actually had to turn on for the uh, the uh, patch panel room. So, some stuff is going on here. I'm going to go ahead and load everything into the office, but this time I'm not going to film it because there is a surprise in there for another video that will be coming out soon, so I don't want to give that away. But I am going to go and load everything now. It is a really disgustingly smoggy day out though, so I'm gonna wear a mask while I do it because I have asthma and I don't want to have to breathe all of that. Okay, everything is in the delightful wood filing cabinet, the Extron switcher, which I've tried to look up. Actually, what is the model number on that? Because I didn't really pay attention. Cross point, switcher, Extron. Um, do, 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 do. There's a serial number and some loose stuff inside. That's that's not great. I noticed it was open as I was checking out. Uh, here's hoping it's not uh, weird. There's a, a bag of fasteners. Uh, I'm going to regret this, aren't I? Doesn't smell like anything's happened. I, I don't know why someone would have opened it. 
Oh, I love it when I buy people's projects. Okay. But uh, that's in. Bookshelf is in, and I took off all of the cabinetry, and it looks a lot better now, so I'm quite happy with that. Uh, the wood trim up top is in reasonable shape. It's just that bottom corner that was disintegrated. And I noticed once it was in the van and up, they actually stuffed the crack with pieces of cork and then put wood glue in. So it's just kind of, but it looks good and it'll match the uh, secret project. So uh, we'll be seeing more of that soon. I thought it would be nice to put a whiteboard together as well today, um, <clears throat> but I realized I don't have any markers. So I can't do that. Um, now you might hear some stuff going on. Uh, the wall is being constructed, uh, so that's cool. Uh, soon we'll have access to the rest of the space, but uh, that means for right now I'm going to put off some other stuff for today. So I'm going to scale back what I was planning, um, but uh, there is still a number of things that we can get to today. So let's start with a couple of things that are uh, going to answer some questions you guys have had in the comments about the previous videos. All right, now first off, the window. Now, some of you mentioned that I shouldn't block the window because it's nice to have natural lighting. And if I wasn't doing filming, I would agree that would be great, but I need to be able to control the lighting. Matter of fact, I should actually turn these lights off because they will influence the white balance of the image. This should now look more accurate. So I really need to control the lighting of the room and having random daylight coming in of varying intensity and color with clouds and, well, today smog and then just pure brightness really makes it hard to account for. Now, <clears throat> the other thing is the games. Now, I mentioned this, but I don't think I showed it well enough. This is Torok 2 and my copy here, if we see on the spine here, looks good. But on the other side, it is washed out. And across the front, you can somewhat see from this side it's good, and then going over, it's not as good. This is sun fading, and this is what happens when red ink is exposed to sunlight. Now, I'm not sure if it is the UV. Some people mentioned that I could put a UV film over the window, but <clears throat> it doesn't really matter because, again, I'm filming, and I don't want to have the light, you know, influencing the space that I'm working in. So for me, the best option is just to block the window. Now, I'm going to try and do it with something like this dollar store foam board that's now lost. <laughs> well, I have two pieces here. One wasn't enough anyway. Because uh, once that's up, it'll look white and it'll blend in, um, unlike a big curtain, because then people will say, oh, there's a window behind there and they'll notice it. So yeah, I just don't want to deal with that. Um, additionally, this shelf, some people are really bothered by the fact that it's leaning back. Um, so I'll just let you know that <clears throat> all I have to do is just pull that forward and it will be fixed. It's just that it's pulled so far away from the wall and the carpet is not very well padded back there. Um, you know what? This piece is not that great of a foam board. So here, let's just do this. One more fold. There you go, corner filled. Uh, that's all I really needed to do. It's just because this one is slightly farther out. These get to lean directly into the wall, so they're fine. But there we go, one thing solved. Now, down here. I found my tablecloth, so we can get rid of that and we can put this on now and that should look a lot better. I really like having the color here. Uh, it just makes it much more appealing. Oh yeah, on camera I can already tell that is just superior. So there we go. That is a lot <laughs> better. It's just a better contrasting color than black. The only unfortunate downside is that it's so bright is that it reflects up onto black subjects and colors them and makes them look a little washed out, but that's better overall. Okay, on to the next thing. One more thing about the ink on these, and that's to do with the lights. Now these are fluorescent lights and they are very real fluorescent lights. Uh, they're old, they're starting to fail, I can see that one flickering. 
um, I'm going to be replacing these with LEDs um, for multiple reasons. One, uh, because these can damage the ink on there. If we go back to the footage I shot at uh, the Computer History Museum, you can see that I actually commented on a very faded copy of Doom 2. That was in an area with windows, it, so it may have been that, but I suspect that it was a fluorescent light. So I will be replacing these for that reason, but also because of the color temperature. Now, if you look at this back wall here right now, uh, this is an intentionally poorly lit shot because you can see up in that top corner there, it's a little blue, but as it gets farther down, it's a little more yellow. I have one of my filming lights very far away pointed this direction and then these on. Now the filming light will look slightly blue and these will look slightly yellow because they're different color temperature lights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace all of these in the areas that I film and keep stuff like that with LED bulbs that are the same daylight color temperature that my filming lights are. That way I don't have to worry about the ink fading and I can leave these lights on because as I mentioned I shut these off when I'm filming which means that it is dark once I move the lights around. So the lights ca causing issues for the ink is not going to be a problem. The AC vent that I mentioned I couldn't do anything with. Now uh, I didn't show you but here it is fully taped onto the vent so I would have to remove the ducting in order to move it and that's not good. Now it's possible that I had this backwards and that this is actually the AC out and that the one back there is the return. Um, I was told what I said the first time but it would actually make more sense for this to be the output. Now as far as having the landlord swap it, um, the way that it works with the lease is you take the space as it is when you sign the contract unless you negotiate in changes. I did not negotiate that into the contract so that will not be changed. So I would have to get permission to have that modified which I'm just not going to do when all I have to do is just go turn off the AC. Not a problem. Well it's buttons but you know. So that's not a bad solution. Maybe later I'll get it replaced or something but that's not an immediate concern right now. Here's how loud this AC vent is when it kicks on. Right now it's off but I'm going to keep recording until it turns on. The majority of the noise you're hearing is the air passing through the fins. It's just a poorly designed vent. If I come over to any of the other ones, there's airflow, but they're nowhere near as loud. It just has to do with how this vent is designed. Next, networking. Okay, now I'm not going to be doing anything with these today, but I probably am going to be using these. So first off, I'm going to pop this out and see what I'm actually working with back here because I didn't do that the first time. Uh, so I want to see if these are actually uh, keystones or if it's just some kind of other thing. Okay, there we go. So uh, yes, these do appear to be oh, panel mounts of some description. <clears throat> there we are. Uh, so, oh man, these are even labeled here. So this is fairly well done. Uh, there's a lot of extra cable in the wall. That's smart. Um, but what I'm probably going to do is either reuse these endpoints or just get all new ones and run my own custom setup. Um, and then I'll use these cables to pull my cable up through the wall. Now, this is uh, it's labeled Cat6, uh, but someone was very generous. I don't know if they want to be named. I don't think so. Um, and they're sending me a thousand foot spool of Cat6A so that I can run all new cable to everywhere I need. So they're actually going to be uh, giving me some advice on how to best do this stuff. So in the future, there will be a network rewiring episode, but for 
Right now, I'm just gonna leave it until everything is done construction-wise, and then I know exactly what's going where. Uh, one thing I will be doing today, though, before I leave, is going around and marking where all of these panels are, and then, uh, like I mentioned, seeing what types of connectors they have. If this is uh, the same kind of thing, it has Cat6 labeled on the front of it like this one does, then I should be good to go and uh, we'll know exactly what I have everywhere. Although, this is, well, this is zip tied together. I don't know how reusable these are, so I may just end up replacing them, but I don't know. Uh, again, I have not worked with anything like this, so I'm going to be deferring for uh, advice on this. Okay, uh, I started working on the shelf. I moved it over here to where it'll probably be for now. Um, eventually, it's going to be in uh, on the other side of this wall, actually, once the construction's done and everything. Um, but <laughs> I figured out what it's going to take to move the support shelves. So the, the main shelves just slide in and out really easily. That's what these metal things are. They're actually rails that uh, go in there, and then the shelves have grooves in them. So that's kind of awesome because that's going to be very strong and the pegs are not going to fall out because they're not pegs so this is actually a really high quality shelf but uh these center pieces so it turns out there are screws that just go into the holes uh where you can put the shelf uh brackets here and then there is a fastener that you put inside it's a complicated weird metal thing that you twist kind of like the ikea hidden ones um, you put it inside the shelf and then you put the shelf over the screws on here. So the only way I'm going to be able to move the positions of this shelf and this shelf are to take off the fasteners on the tops and the bottom and then remove the entire side panel on both sides <laughs> and then I can actually reposition these core support shelves. So. Yay, that's going to be fun. I think I will wait until the construction's done and do that as I move it because that doesn't sound like a lot of fun to do. So I'm going to back burner that for now. Um, but I found my ThinkJet. It's sitting over there. So we can actually go ahead and do the hard copy supporter stuff next. And I think I will spend a little bit of time and show you how I do that because I haven't really talked about that a whole lot. Okay, so let's start off with connecting a printer. So I always use a modern computer, like my HP Z820 here, to do the hard copy printouts. I could connect this to a vintage computer and transfer over a text file and print all that, but it's really just not worth it. So one of the only things that I have well organized in my whole collection of cables are my serial and parallel cables, because I end up doing both different kinds of connections. So one of the things I'll use is a USB LPT adapter like that, and I will probably be using that with the ThinkJet here, so I'll go ahead and pull that out. I also have another one somewhere else, because one of these doesn't play well with Linux. It might actually be that one, I don't remember. We'll find out. But in here I also have USB serial adapters. Um, they're hiding right now, but if I'm using something like my Apple Image Writer, which is another printer that I really like using for this, uh, then I'll have to use that. Now, next is formulating the file, now that I can connect it to a modern computer, and how I actually send the document over because I'm not just using Word or something. Okay, now that I have the printer connected to the modern computer, I can go ahead and control it. And I do this from Linux because I'm a Linux user and it makes it really easy to work with. So if I do ls dev usb and I can see lp0 is in there, that is the device that is the printer adapter. So what I can do here is I can echo and just do a space so I don't use up any ink and send that to LP0 and didn't do anything. Okay, uh, I've swapped out the printer. <laughs> I want to use the ThinkJet for the final print and now I can, but I have this set up right now. So I'm just gonna show you how this actually works with this. Uh, the ribbon on this is just pretty faint. It must have been run through a bunch of times, uh, but you can probably see uh, the text, at least I'll modify the image so you can see the text. But okay, <laughs> uh, 
So t what it turned out that there was some kind of buffer issue uh, with the printer adapters. I don't normally echo out to the uh, line printer device. So, and that's what LP stands for, it's line printer. Uh, and I'm not sure that that actually works. Uh, so if I do echo here, um, and then I do it to dev LP0, oh, that actually worked. It just really wants to drive me crazy. I don't know, maybe it was a ThinkJet not working. But anyway, um, what uh, I can do now is cat out a file. So if we look at this file as it is, it'll say this is a printing test. And then if I cat it to the device, it will print onto the device. Now I can just use this to bring it up here. Uh, or the Platin control is a lot easier. It says this is a printing test on it. So what I'm doing for the hard copy stuff is I've written a script that takes CSVs from Patreon and then a CSV that I generate from the YouTube membership and I create a text file that I can just cat out and that is what is printed. So let's take a look at the uh, Python file. Actually, I'm gonna put this whole section up on my second channel. That way non-programmers don't have to sit through 13 minutes of random programming mumbling. All right, we're getting into the final stages here. I'm switching to my phone because I'm setting up the camera so that I can actually film this. I'm running this for the better audio quality. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I have my lights set up, pointed at the paper at an angle so that the reflections aren't that bad. I've framed it, um, and one of the things I'm gonna do here is I'm going to modify the angle of this little bar so that when the paper sticks up, it is perpendicular to the camera. That looks a lot better now. Um, and then one of the things that I need to do here before this is since I've printed on this page, I'm going to need to pull it up. I could form feed. There is a button for this, but I don't know that I have this set up correctly. And then I'm just going to actually do the old fashioned tear here. Bingo. And then I will take the front cover off because I want you to be able to actually see the print happening at the print head. As this goes along, so now you can see that. Let me fix the light that I just bumped there. And then I'm going to go over to the computer and I'm going to cat printout.txt to dev, is this the USB one or is this the LP, this is LP, bingo. And now as soon as I press enter, it will actually do the print, go. And there we are, I believe everyone's name, yep, they all showed up. This printer was the one that I put the uh, spacing for. Um, I'm going to be relying on my lapel mic for that shot. Normally, I actually put the big Moran's mic over this, but I kind of just forgot because I was in the moment here. So hopefully that's good enough. I'm gonna check on the camera itself in a moment. And then if it's not good enough, I will reshoot. But this mic picks up quite a bit, so I think it'll be fine. So that is the hard copy printing process that I've used so far. And uh, that would be normally it. But now I'm going to be doing that uh, mailing. So first off, I'm curious to see here how well this 
fits in one of these. I have not tried this yet. I thought it would be fun to find out on camera. So let me, let me see if form feet will work. Ah, it was a little close. Oh, it was really far off. I huh. wonder if this is long paper or something, but uh, there we go. Well, top of form set. Okay, now I can do that. And now it should tear cleanly. Yep. Perfect. Okay, so now what I can do is this will fit in there. Oh, that's nice with a little lot of space actually. So I can put the tractor in there. Excellent. Now I'm not sure will half folds fit. No, they will not. So I'm gonna have to fold these into thirds. That's unfortunate, but fine. Yeah, that'll definitely fit. Yeah, really not half. Definitely not half. Okay. So yeah, thirds, um, I'll have to find out how I want to do this, but I do need to sign. So I'm going to sign up here, but unfortunately, uh, oh no, I did bring a pen. Where is it? Right here. So let me go ahead. I will be signing the first one of these ever right here. There we are, and yes, for reference, I have devised a different non-legal signature. <laughs> Some people like to worry about those things, and yes, I did. Um, so that is extraordinarily fragrant, but now I can fold this into thirds. And put it in the envelope, but I'm not done quite yet because I really don't want to hand label these. So let's take a look at the next step. Okay, so this is the IBM printing wheel writer that I just did a video on. So what I can do is go to printer on off and then it will not work anymore. But what I can do here is take the envelope that I'm going to be sending out, pop it in here like actually like this and then no oh that's because the controls are disabled oh see this is where this is going to get real fancy um then let's go to cd mail and from here i'm going to be blurring out parts of this so you can't see addresses but you're going to see that the mechanism works so that's that's what i'm doing so i need to run labeling and then the members okay so if i were to do this um if i unzoom here actually you'll see the formatting that it would be roughly so i'm doing a kind of that's what the letter should look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and can this. I'm going to Vim labeling and I'm going to disable my test um, because I wanted that if it didn't work. Now this is, um, what device is this? This is LP0, so I actually need to change this to that. Okay, now I can rerun this and it should for real print this. or not. Uh, oh, that might do it. Form. Oh, huh? Oh, that didn't work. Yeah, okay, so something's not happy. The new line did not work there for some reason, why? Okay, cancel. Let's, uh, well, that's annoying that it, okay, I'm going to put actual paper in here for now. <laughs> I don't, I can't burn through my envelopes. <laughs> Printer on, but I think I know what's wrong. Going to here, yeah, I didn't print a line end, so yank. I'm just going to be super lazy here. Just do that. Now I can redo this. Yes.
that will be perfect. And then I can go on to the next one, and that one actually uh, has a German, I don't know what the name of it is, but it looks like a weird fancy B. Um, so I'm gonna have to skip that one. Then the next one I can do, and that'll work with the envelopes. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and manually type that out, but you know what, let's do, let's do this. Printer on, okay. Now it started the addressing a little low, but I'm fine with that. Uh, let's go ahead and run it. And that is an addressed envelope. Okay, so things I'm learning here, I need to space this down four lines. There we are. Now the spacing will look better. That is my solution for labeling, and I think that is going to be really cool. Flip that around so it doesn't have to be blurred anymore. Uh, I'm really excited about that. I think that's gonna be a lot of fun just for me to do, um, just because now I have a reason to use this. I've already purchased, uh, I think, five more Wheel Rider ribbons uh, because I know this is gonna burn through them really quick. These are still being made, um, so it's not uh, using up new old stock, it's new new stock. So it's not say, you know, it's not neg negligent to use up these things because they're out there. So this is kind of the perfect device because I can make changes if I need to or you know move it around and it's so easy to feed. Like you imagine feeding an envelope into this thing, that would suck. So this is really nice. And then the other good thing is, is you can't see it here because I can't show you anything, but the film ribbon that the wheel rider uses because it's daisy wheel is so uh, high contrast and clear because it's ink uh, it'll work well for shipping as well so yeah I really like this this is good but yeah okay so I'm finally set up for hard copy supporter oh that's so nice um, it's been too long <laughs> well two videos that's not too bad but uh, yeah okay so uh, I'm not gonna bore you with this and I'm not gonna start on this right now. Let's see what we can tackle next on my list. Actually, let me pull out the list here and check it. I have a Google Tasks list so that I don't forget everything. Um, I padded the game shelf, okay. I didn't block the window because I actually need a lot more of that foam board than I thought. I wasn't able to hang a whiteboard because I didn't bring markers, so there's no point. Um, the security stuff will be handled as soon as the construction is finished. The hard copy area has been set up. Um, there's one other thing that I wrote on here and we can check that out right now. Now this is obviously an extremely important thing that we need to determine. Uh, a little while ago, uh, DOS Nostalgic retweeted someone's tweet about the expansion pack to Duke Nukem 3D, Caribbean, Life's a Beach, in that some versions have a tiny little stream of blood and some versions don't. So, which one do I have? Let's find out. That's Nuclear Winter. It's the sanitized version. No bloodstream. That is such a weird distinction. While I'm over here though, I may as well add the two big box programs that I picked up. Uh, DVD X copy, which I guess, I mean, I'm out of space here. Um, and then Microsoft Encarta 94, which as I mentioned there is missing the disc. So I'm off to eBay on that one, but uh, yeah, those are now the first new big boxes being added to here, so that's kind of fun. Uh, why is this so poorly? Well, is this, this doesn't fit right. Is this slim case supposed to be in here? Oh, that's great. <laughs> With their copy of DVD-X copy, someone has a bootleg copy of a DVD decryptor. Wow, <laughs> that's so dumb. Uh, and such, such a, totally period accurate thing. So, like a Finding Nemo rip. Oh my, oh my gosh. They actually have a 
hand sharpied labeled copy of Finding Nemo here as one of their examples. That is just great. Oh man, I'm glad I picked that up. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this had the ability to defeat copy protection. Um, it might be this version. This is one of the older ones, I think. Um, but that feature was ruled to be illegal um, in court, but actually making a backup is not. So that might be why they have the DVD decryptor software. This might be one of the later versions that doesn't have that issue. Copyright and copy protection are two very different things. Um, and DVD-X copy is actually a program that was in the middle of a big battle with that. So that's kind of why I picked that up, is that it is somewhat historically significant there. But this box, this needs a little work. I'll have to get to that later. All right, so I'm going to pretty much call that for today. We are making progress. We've got some good things done. I'm very happy to finally have the hard copy supporter stuff set back up so that I can film that. And it's gonna be really nice that I'm gonna have enough space here that I can actually just leave that setup. Usually I have the one table that is used for these shots and everything else. And then I have to take everything off and reset up every time I want to do the hard copy stuff. But now I'm going to be able to just leave that there. And I have a second set of lights so you can see in the first video where I wasn't using the big soft boxes and those I can probably leave over for the hard copy stuff. So that's gonna be nice. Um, I will be making a note to bring some markers so I can put up the whiteboard and have it actually be usable. Um, those are somewhere, they were definitely packed somewhere. I don't know, maybe I'll buy some just to get it out of the way. Um, but there are some other things that are here that are now ready to be filmed, uh, but I need to get to them later because uh, today some stuff is being delivered for the secret video that I've been teasing. Um, and that will be very soon. I have everything for that. I just had to put in some effort. And then the next video that I'm probably going to shoot here will probably be that um, and my thoughts on that. So uh, that will be one. I just want to have a more quiet environment for that video since I can only shoot that once. So uh, that's it for today. Um, that's the first vintage computer here and it's one that hasn't even been on camera yet. So it's a Toshiba Libretto 50CT. It's pretty sweet. I had to put a lot of effort in fixing it, but I didn't do a video about it just because I needed a task that was uh, off camera. This was multiple months ago. So that's it for now. If you want to support the channel, there are multiple links in the description on how you can do that. One way is to get these stickers of the same designs that are also available on shirts. I created these myself and I'm quite happy with how they came out. Note that that uh, calculator is actually exactly the same size as another calculator that, you know, it, it might be based on. Um, it, it came out to exactly the same physical size by complete coincidence. So that one's a little cooler than I meant it to be, but uh, that is it for now. I hope you enjoyed this part three of the vlog. Um, Hopefully these can start getting some more things. I'm going to have to be bringing more furniture in. I really wanted to focus on this corner first and then eventually the whole desk area that I've been working at over there is going to be eliminated and moved into the proper space for it. And then that wobbly table is actually going to get added into another table. If you go way back in my videos before I had the electronics bench, I had a table that was similar to the wobbly table, but it's got actual solid wood sides so it doesn't wobble. Um, and I'm going to put the two together over in that corner to form at least the beginning of the C-shaped desk. I don't want those as my final tables, but I have them, so I might as well use them. Um, well, they'll either go there or in the uh, modern computer location. I'm just not sure how I want to lay that out yet until I have access to the space and can start laying things out. So that's stuff to work towards. But uh, another thing that's coming up is the networking rewiring that will be fun i just need to get some resources for that um but yeah i think that we're on a good course uh not as much progress today but i'm very happy with the progress uh so i hope you enjoyed that and uh i will see you next time now for an actual paper printout